this time we'll ask the funeral directors to come. As we prepare to close the casket, we'll give the family, the immediate family, another opportunity if they desire to give their last respects and their last viewing. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and will after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why have thou within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. And he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How thou, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, nor, the, nor is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them they have no might. He increases strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with thy right hand of righteousness. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, for thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall thy flame kindle unto thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Peace, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. And in the world ye shall have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. We've come this morning to celebrate the life and the legacy and the love that have been shared between you and our dearly beloved Alpha Holder Jr. And we just come to thank God for 55 years of life and every moment that each of us have shared with him 
was a gift that God has given certainly unto us. And even though we feel that his life was cut short, we know that God makes no mistakes and we come to celebrate and praise God for God keeping him and God sustaining him for the years he has allotted him on this earth. Can we put our hands together and just give God praise because he's still worthy to be praised in all things. Let us pray. Almighty God, our creator of all things, we've come at this hour to certainly realize that you are still God. And God, I pray right now as we start this funeral or homegoing service of celebration of life, we ask, oh God, that you would just touch right now this family we pray right now for his wife, Susan, and we pray for the parents as well, Alpha Senior and Darlene Holder. God, we ask that you would touch the children and grandchildren and all of those family members who have come and friends who have gathered, those who even couldn't make it today but are viewing online on our broadcast. God, we just ask that in this moment as we've come together, as we share with one another the memories, as we share with one another the the love that has penetrated through the hearts of your people. God, we ask that you would touch us right now. Give us comfort even in this moment and in this hour. And then as days go by, we pray that you would be with this family, that you would give them strength, O oh Lord, to be able to hold their head up and realize that you are still God. Give them the comfort that each day they will need. Give them the strength each day they will need in order to survive and to know that he is not dead, but he has transitioned to you. And God, we believe in the word of God that your word tells us that we ought to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that you are Lord. And Alpha has done just that. And so God, we believe that he is with you in your care. And so God, we ask that you would touch right now, touch this service right now, O oh Lord. Give us an opportunity in this service to realize that you are with us. So have Holy Spirit rest and rule and abide with us even right now. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say together, amen. The scripture readings, and after the scripture readings, then we'll have the music ministry. Old Testament reading is coming from out of the book of David, Psalm 23. And I read this in your hearing that you may be comforted by the words of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The New Testament reading comes from out of the book of John, where Jesus comforts his disciples where he says these words, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, that in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus goes on to say to his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And one of his disciples, by the name of Thomas, responded to Jesus by asking him this question. He said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, so how can we know the way? And Jesus responds to his disciple by saying this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hear ye the word of God for the people of God that we may give you comfort in this moment. 
We'll now have music ministry to come and, and uh, render us a selection, and followed by that, we'll have acknowledgments and condolences that will be read by our beloved uh, Rosie Washington, and then followed by that, we'll look at the uh, and read, have a silent reading of the obituary. Thank you. 
This is truly the day that the Lord hath made. And even on an occasion as this, we do celebrate. We celebrate the love and the life of our loved one. From the mayor of the city of Gary, on behalf of the citizens of Gary and Mayor Jerome A. Prince, we wish to express our heartfelt Condolences on the passing of your loved one, Alpha Holder Jr. We pray that God gives you and your family the strength, perseverance, and the courage to endure the pain and sorrow of coping with the death of a loved one. Alpha has a great legacy. My prayer is that you keep your head up and your hand in the master's hand. Our God is truly able to see you through. Mayor Jerome A. Prince, City of Gary. There were numerous resolutions and condolences. They will be given to the family who will take the time to read and appreciate each of them and will respond to you appropriately. I will recognize those condolences or resolutions if representatives from that organization or whatever may is present, feel free to stand as your uh, organization is recognized. We have from the New Friendship Baptist Church Reverend Royce Thompson, Sr., pastor. From the Village First Baptist Church to Susie, Chris, Alpha, Trevon, and the entire family. The Reverend Dr. Morris Cruz. We have condolences from Fred and Linda Pope from Erie, Pennsylvania. From the St. Timothy Community Church, the July birthday group, the August birthday group, with Herbert Dunaway as the president of that, uh, of that ministry. Dear Alpha, Senior, and Darlene, we, the members of the St. Timothy, and this is from the missionary group, if you would please stand. We, the members of the St. Timothy Community Church Missionary Group, were saddened to hear of the loss of your son, Mr. Alpha Holder, Jr. May precious memories sustain you when the burden gets heavy and you are unable to fight back the tears. Lean on us your fellow missionary members, so that we may be of comfort to you in your time of need. The Bible says, and I quote, so with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. 
This is found John 16th chapter, 22nd verse. Humbly submitted on this February 4th, 2022, the St. Timothy Community Church Missionary Group. Geraldine Stance is the president. St. Timothy Community Church, the Lord's blessing. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. St. John 11th chapter, 25th, 26th verses. To the family of our beloved member, Alpha Holder Jr. Whereas our Lord has called Alpha from labor to reward, we, the pastors, officers, and members of St. Timothy Community Church, extend our deepest sympathy to you in your time of sorrow. As you mourn the passing of your dear loved one, we commend to you our Heavenly Father for Comforter. One of the most beautiful truths of our faith is that life does not end at death. We believe that life is changed, not taken away. In faith, we know that those who have died remain with us in love and in the communion of saints. In hope, we look forward lovingly to the day when we will reunite with them for all eternity. Be it resolved that Alpha Holder Jr. has laid down his cross and received his crown. He is now safe in his arms. Alpha and Darlene, we say to you, trust in the Lord. Look to him for guidance and strength, and he will carry you through. Done by the order of St. Timothy Community Church this fourth day of January, 2022. Reverend Dr. Lenin M. Jackson, Senior Pastor, Board of Trustees, and the entire congregation of St. Timothy Community Church. The family of Alpha Holder Jr. acknowledges with sincere appreciation the prayers, comforting messages, floral tributes, and other expressions of kindness during this time of bereavement. May God bless and keep you. He, we will all understand it better by and by. Pastor. In your bulletin, you have um, the order of service and there's also the obituary. Let's take a few moments as the uh, Minister of Music, Dr. Lena Mack, plays softly. Uh, would you then at this time read uh, silently the obituary?
At this time, we have reflections by Ms. Linda White, if she would come at this time and uh, stand at the podium to my right. Good morning. A difficult day, but yet we give God praise for who he is and everything that he does, whether we understand or not. He is in control. He will keep. He will deliver us. He will provide for us if we ask him. I want to give God thanks. for just being who he has been to me. And Pastor, thank you. Church members, Ms. Miles, Ms. Diana, and so many others for all of the help and support. We thank St. Timothy because they have been great in doing what they've done through the storm and the weather. And we can't even tell you how much has happened. I want to say that much has been said about my cousin. We all love them dearly and it is evident for us just being out here on this stormy day alone. And we thank you for the comforting words, the messages, and the tributes of love that has been shown. But I would be remiss to stand here today and not speak about the love of a family. So I wanna say, anybody who's sitting here probably already knows this, but Susie, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for loving my cousin the way that you have. Unconditional, no matter what. And as we jokingly say, she would cut his, clip his toenails while he sleep if he wanted her to. <laughs> and I really mean that. She has been uh, an anchor, if I may, in every set of circumstances. And again, I can't even find the words to tell you thank you but as you already know, you, we grew up together and you've just always been family. And of course, you know that we are here for you. Now let me talk about my aunt and my uncle, Alpha Senior and Darlene Holden. You could never in a million years find anyone with a greater love for their child than these two. When I say unconditional, I mean unconditional no matter the circumstances. And so, a uh, great thanks and applaud to you all for just being who you are. And I mean that. Everybody knows it. And the same thing, anything that is needed, always there. Um, so I wanna talk real quickly about the true meaning of love. And I wouldn't have said all that, Pastor, but just since I'm the one, only one speaking. <laughs> but unconditional love, and I, and I wanna say that, uh, as I said, you can search the world and find no one who could not attest to the unconditional love of not, not only them, but this family, cousins and, and so on, uh, that I can't mention everybody's name, but I wanna speak about courage. And courage speaks to devotion of duty, commitment, and it speaks to pledge Dedication speaks to the strong support of loyalty. But in Corinthians 1.13, Paul tells us that love isn't merely a feeling, but it's a way of relating to others. Uh, staying in Corinthians 13 and 7, it talks about how love bears all things. That has been apparent. Believes all things hopes all things, and so endures all things. And finally, Corinthians 13, 13, so now faith, hope, and love abide. But of these three, love, it is the greatest gift of all. So I wanna say that part of your calling to have been here present in this life 
auntie and uncle, was to love your son. And with that being your calling, the last words that I have to say as it relates to that job is job well done. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Rodney Taylor, Minister Taylor, from Gary, Indiana, via Mississippi now. And Miss Mack, I'm one of her former students. So. Sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road Hey, I ask this question, Lord Why, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me Oh, yes, he does. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I won't complain. The Lord, he's been good to me has really been so good to me more than this world could ever be he's been so good to me you know what he did he dried all my tears away Turn my dark midnights into day. So I'll just say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. We're going home with this. God, God's been good to me. He's been really, 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 really good to me. More than this whole world could ever be. He's been so good to me. You know what he did? He dried all my tears away. Come on, somebody. Turn my midnights into day. Let's go home, Miss Mac. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've been lied on, but thank you, Lord. I've been talked about, 
but thank you, Lord. I've been misunderstood, but thank you, Lord. You might be sick, but thank you, Lord. Body racked with pain, but thank you, Lord. Don't know where the money's coming from, but thank you, Lord. Ah, oh, whoa. So I thank all those who have participated in this homegoing service celebration. And I also want to make this um, comment as well. Um, just because there wasn't an opportunity for each and every person here to say something, I wanted you to make sure you knew and know uh, that Oftentimes, it's not always what we say, but oftentimes it's just being present, uh, being here, being supportive um, for this family. And uh, your presence here uh, is cer certainly uh, has given, I'm sure, comfort to uh, this family as they mourn and grieve um, their beloved. And we as the community of believers, we come and we gather uh, to not only pay tribute to uh, Alpha uh, Junior, but also, again, to support uh, this family. And so certainly, I bring greetings on behalf of St. Timothy Community Church and its officers and members, and certainly to uh, Susan and uh, to uh, Alpha uh, Senior and to Darlene, and, um, and all the family that's present here, the children and grandchildren, and. Um, and all those who have come near and far to come to pay tribute this morning uh, and show your love uh, as well. Uh, sometimes we don't understand why things happen and, and why things uh, transpire in life, but what we do know is, is that there still is a God. And we have to trust God and believe God uh, in all things. Let us pray as we center ourselves and our spirits and our souls to in this moment of celebration. Almighty God, we thank you again for your presence. And we feel your presence even now that is giving us the comfort and the strength, O oh Lord, to, to get through this moment. But never forget who Alpha Jr. was. And so God, Speak, O oh Lord, through your word that it would encourage us, uplift us, that it would help us, O oh Lord, to be able to go on to the next day and the days that lie ahead, to be able to continue to live life and knowing that uh, Alpha is in your care and in your hands. Bless this moment as we share in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When we look at and talk about death, death is a natural part of, of life. And not only is death the natural part of life, so is birth. In order for one to experience death, one has to experience the birth process and coming into this world. And as each of us here are born into this world, each of us, God has given us what is considered time. He's given us time. He's given us this dash that's between the birth date and our death date. And for each of us, this time that's in the middle is different for all of us. And I've been on earth long enough for 44 years now to, and 10 years in pastorate to be able to witness those who, uh, who have lived uh, uh, 80 and 90 plus years. I've been around long enough to see uh, my great-grandmother and, 
and others who have gone through this journey of life and lived a long life. And it used to be a time where uh, you would live a long life um, and older folks would pass and not younger. But now the world is different, life is different, things have changed to a point where uh, it doesn't matter how old or how even young you are, death never has a particular age attached to it, but when death comes, it comes. And we have now witnessed the transition, and I say transition because we who believe in God, we who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior in our lives, we believe that uh, this is not the end of the story. In other words, that we all have read materials, articles, and newspapers, and books, and have watched movies, and everything that we have read or even watched, it had some sort of end. It had a conclusion to the story. But this story that is being told, this story that we are living through, uh, does not end here, uh, but it transitions to a heavenly place. We who have faith as Alpha had faith in God, we believe that when this life is over, that there is a resting place for the believer. Let me, let me indicate what the believer or who the believer is, because sometimes we'll get mixed up in thinking that one has to be perfect in order to be a believer. But no one has to be perfect to be a, a, be a believer. In fact, that we all are not perfect people. Uh, you know that, right? You're not perfect people. And, and because we're imperfect, that we serve a God who is perfect, who has sent his son, Jesus the Christ, who came in the flesh to uh, sacrifice his life so that our sins, your sins, and my sins would be forgiven. And we are living in a time where uh, we have to believe, Apostle Paul says, to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord and you shall be saved. Salvation is not complicated. Sometimes we make it complicated, but it's just a confession of one's sins uh, to God, knowing and believing that he is Lord. And the Bible says that you are saved. Uh, we look at 55 years of life that God had given unto Alpha Jr. And during this time, during this 55 years, he uh, had an uh, opportunity to have wonderful parents that had groomed him and developed him to be the man that he was. And even though that there were some challenges in his own personal life, he still b believed in God. And as he matriculated and grew in his life and developed in life, he uh, got educated and uh, he furthered himself and uh, he found himself not only educating himself with academics and academia, uh, but he also took time to uh, be brought into the church through his parents and to be able to grow up in the life of this church. And so as you have read in the obituary, uh, he joined this church back in the 80s of 1982 to be exact. But then after that, high school years have rolled on and uh, he matured and grew up and uh, enlisted himself into the U.S. Army. And I give him credit for that. Uh, I, I, you know, not everybody can do that. Not everybody can survive in the, uh, in the Army. And, and I'll just be transparent. Uh, in high school, they, uh, we had this NJRTC in the Navy, and, uh, and I uh, a bit was a part of that in my junior and senior year. And we went to this um, uh, uh, two weeks uh, that we had to go away, and, uh, and we had to go for training. Uh, but after that two weeks was over, I decided for myself that that was not for me. I said I'll stick with the books and stick with the business uh, degree and so forth. And, 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 but he, had, uh, he, he was able to manage in being uh, in, the, uh, in the Army. And, and then later, uh, being able to start a family and to then later get married and to have children and to have grandchildren and to have a prosperous uh, life and family, showing love for one another. Uh, we, 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 we think about life and how life presents itself, and each of us have our own journey, and, and we have bear witness, many of you, particularly family and friends, you have bear witness of his life. I would just say a few things about my personal encounter with Alpha. And so we, we around here at St. Timothy, we believe uh, in fellowship, 
uh, when I first arrived here three years ago, uh, I was introduced to the birthday groups. And, in, and when you join this church, you are automatically put in the birthday group, depending on what birthday month you were born in. And the birthday groups are very sometimes competitive around here, and, uh, but they mainly uh, they fellowship within the group in that they would go out in the month of their birthday group and they would celebrate their birthdays, go to a restaurant. And so it was a particular moment in which I, as the pastor, uh, I was invited. Uh, and I'm so privileged to be invited to every birthday group. And not only am I invited to every birthday group, but then they pay for my meal. Uh, in his birthday group, and we, uh, they had their outing, and that was my first really good opportunity in which uh, I met Susan and met uh, Alpha, and matter of fact, I was sitting right across from them at the same table. And we all began to order our meals, and uh, all of a sudden, when the meals came, uh, he had ordered this salad, and I just looked at him and looked at the salad. Now, I wasn't going to order a salad, but I ordered some steak, and uh, my meat, my steak came. And I remember asking him, I said, you sure you don't want anything else with that salad? And, uh, and he said, no, I'm, I'm trying to watch uh, my weight, watch my, my figure. And, and I said, brother, you go ahead and do that. You watch while I eat. <laughs> with, 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 with Alpha, there, uh, every moment in which he uh, experienced some you know, trouble in his life, he would give his pastor a call. And I always, all my members have my cell phone number, and I tell everybody that, particularly my members, if you need to talk or you need to reach me for anything, I don't care what uh, hour of the night it is, just call me or text me, uh, and I certainly will pick up the phone and, uh, and, and listen and talk to you. And he took advantage of that, and uh, he had my cell phone number, and he called me and, uh, when he needed, needed to talk or when he was going into the hospital for a surgery, he would call, be, wanted prayer before he go in. And, uh, and even afterwards, he would, he would call as he, re he was recovering in the hospital for prayer or for me to come by and stop by and visit him in, in the hospital. Uh, he, he, he had faith in God, is what I'm saying to us, is that in spite of the challenges in which he faced in his life, um, in spite of his health conditions, that he still had a, a sense of knowing that I still have to reach out to God. I still have to have a connection uh, with God. And, and, I, and I contribute that to his parents and, um, and for, for allowing him and being in, 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 in his presence and showing that example of a God-fearing mother and father uh, and bringing him into church. And, uh, and, you know, we all need something to pull on. We all need something to hold on when we are in our times of trouble. And, and no matter what he had experienced in life, he knew that he can call friends and family, but he also knew he can call on God. And I would submit to us that in this book of Psalms that was read earlier, particularly a couple of verses I want to share with you this morning that would give us comfort, that Psalms 23 in verses 1 through 3 where David himself had also experienced his own struggles in life. David was not perfect. David had a sinful nature. But yet he also was chosen by God. He also had a relationship with God. He knew how to serve God and to call on God in the time of trouble. David says in his Psalm 23, he says, The Lord is my shepherd. And he says, and I shall not want. I would submit to us that not only did David know that the Lord was his shepherd and he had not a want for anything, so did Alpha. Alpha Jr. knew that there was a God that was, was covering him. There was a God that was looking out for him. There was a God that was concerned about him and that he had not a want for anything in this world that when he was in trouble, he knew he can call on God. And, and when he was in the hospital, when he was sick, he knew that God will bring him through, and God did just that. He says, he maketh me, David says, to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. But here is the point where I want to put a bookmark in this text, 
where David says he restores my soul. And, and I want to park there and, 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 and I want to leave this with you, family and friends, that, that even with David, David had an, uh, a knowing of that, 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 that life has presented him with some, with some tough times, but he realized that in his brokenness and in his trouble and, and, and in his trial and tribulation that there was a God that will restore him. And David says that he restoreth my soul. And I just come to tell you this morning that Alpha Junior's soul has been restored. Let me give you a definition of restored. Restored means to bring back to or to put back something to its former or original state. We are born into this world as innocents. We're born into this world um, in a sinful world, but, but we, we, as we develop and as we grow, we begin to experience this world. But as we experience this world, that's why God sent Christ, sent Jesus, that Jesus would come because he knew that we would mess up he knew that we would be in trouble, and so he sent his only begotten son to us. But therefore, being restored means we, we go back to our original state in which God had initially created us to be. He looks at the fact that he has created us to be good. David, in spite of his life, in spite of his imperfectness, God chose him. And none of our lives are perfect, but in his imperfectness, he has given us life. And David, in his text, he begins to talk about not only that God being his shepherd and him not wanting from anything, but David parks here and David also realizes that he also has to be restored. He also has to be renewed. He also has to be transformed and changed. And therefore, I leave with us that each of us, as we continue to live our lives, that all of us have to have a change in our lives. That when we accept Christ and when we accept the Lord as Savior over our lives, that we then ask God to work on us. We ask God to change us. We ask God to work on the inside so that whatever is going on on the inside, it would look better, our lives would look better. That tells us that each of us here today, that as we continue to live life, we will mess up. We will have some trouble. We will have sickness that may come upon us. But no matter what the trouble or the sickness may be, we have to know that there is a God that will restore us. And there is a restoration that happens here on earth where God restores his people, but then there is an ultimate restoration where God restores us, where he comes for us, where we are transitioned to him, to live eternally with him in the heavens. Let me close with this story of my, uh, my grandfather, my grandfather, he passed back in 2017, but prior to his passing, he had uh, this 1980 uh, Ford truck, and on it was white, and on front of the truck, uh, he, he had on the hood, uh, he had Big Jack. And folks would wonder why he would put Big Jack on the front of his truck. He put Big Jack on the front of his truck because the Jack uh, was a short of Jackson, and everybody called him Jack. And Big Jack, because of his stature, he was very tall, about 6'1", 6'2", of a guy, very uh, broad shoulders, and, uh, and, and he was called Big Jack for his nickname. But my grandfather had this truck, and this truck then began to complicate some things, and it began to cause uh, uh, a fact that the truck broke down, and. He got tired of the truck, but he never uh, got rid of the truck because that was his baby. So therefore, the truck stayed in the back of the yard, in the back of the driveway, and he bought a newer truck, and he drove that around until he was deceased. And when he died, he 
we, we as the family, uh, my grandmother gave away or, or sold his newer truck, but the old truck just sat in the back of the yard. The old truck, the white 1984, just sat in the back. The tires were, uh, were flat and uh, the truck uh, uh, could not run. It would not run. And uh, the truck was just looking bad. And, and, and it sat back there. Nobody wanted it. Uh, we didn't know what to do with it. But one day, a gentleman came by my grandmother's house and uh, she made, he made an offer on the truck. Now, none of us could understand why this man wanted this 1980 white Ford truck that was all beat up and it would not run and had no battery in it and probably needed an engine. But what we saw and what he saw were two different things. We saw a truck that was broke down, a truck that could not run. We saw a truck that, uh, that, that, that probably had to have an engine repaired. But this man saw a truck that could be restored. He, he saw something greater than what we saw that uh, looked on the truck. So he purchased the truck. We sold the truck to the man, and, and he came and got a tow truck to, to tow the truck to uh, his garage. And he was able to see more in the truck because he was a mechanic. And anyone who knows about a mechanic, a mechanic can, uh, can, can fix on something and, and change it and, and make it work. And what was not running, can, and able to it allow it to run again. We didn't have the skill set. We didn't have the, the know-how. We were not mechanics. We, so what we looked at was something that could not be restored. All I'm saying to us is God is like that man who is like the mechanic. He, God sees us better than what we see each other or how we see one another. God saw fit that even though that Alpha had some struggles in his life, even though he had sickness that he had to struggle with, even though there was some heart issues that he had to deal with, but God knew that there was restoration that can happen for this man. And so therefore, when he could not do no more, when family and friends, we could not do no more, when we could not be there any longer, God was there with him, and God was there with him even to the end. And when we could not see things to, uh, to, to come to its fruition and things to be changed around or turned around, God saw something different. God said, look, uh, he may not can be able to handle uh, his circumstances on earth, but I'm coming to grab him. I'm coming to retrieve him. I'm coming to gather him. I'm coming to keep him. Keep him. I'm coming to bring him to a, a better place so that he can rest forevermore, that he cannot have to have uh, any more uh, surgeries or think about any more pain or think about any more sorrow or think about the troubles in this world. There is going to be a time where we all will have to meet our maker again, and his name is Jesus the Christ. And now we are to celebrate. I know it's hard. I know we ought to cry, and I will say don't cry. We ought to mourn, but the Bible says we don't mourn like others mourn as if we have no hope, and our hope is in Christ Jesus. Uh, our hope is in nothing less but Jesus the Christ. We may mourn and we may cry, but our cry and our, and our mourning doesn't mean we have no hope that there is a better tomorrow. Our cry and our mourning doesn't mean that this is the end, but that we cry and we mourn knowing that there there is hope at the end of this story. And that's what the encouragement is this morning. That's the word of comfort this morning is that we believe that according to our faith and our hope in God, that we believe in the word of God, that there is a heaven, there is a other side, there is a place of rest, there is a place where we will go, that the Bible says that there'll be no more weeping and there'll be no more dying and there'll be no more suffering and there'll be no more pain and, and there'll be no more sorrow and we as the believers, we have to hold on to that. That, and we have to believe in according to our faith in God that there is another side to this story. There is another uh, chapter to this story. This book has not ended. His life has not ended, but there is an eternal life in the heavens and we come to rejoice and thank God that there is an eternal life that we all will go to. So therefore, family and friends, I come to cry with you. I come to be sad 
sad with you, but I also come to rejoice with you. I come to give God the praise and, and the glory and the honor. For the Bible says that we ought to bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in our mouths. That means we ought to praise God not just when things are going well in our lives. We ought to praise God not just when things seem to be going good in our lives, but we ought to praise God in the valley. We ought to praise God when there's death. We ought to praise God when there's sorrow. We ought to praise God when we have no money. We ought to praise God when things are difficult in our lives. We ought to praise God when it seems like our back is against the wall. We ought to praise God when we feel like giving up because there's something about the power of praise. When we praise God, we just telling God, God, you're worthy in spite of this. God, you are worthy to be praised. And I come today to tell God, God, I still thank you. I still glorify you. I still lift you up. I still give you the praise. I thank you for 55 years of life that you have given unto Alpha Junior. And all I'm saying is, God, you are still glorified in all of this. And so I leave with you, family and friends. He's been fixed. He's been healed. He's been saved. And we may not be able to hold on to him physically, but hold on to him knowing that he is resting. You hold on to him by thinking about the memories, the fond memories that you have of him. When you get around that family table, when you go to family functions, when you get around his birthday and holidays, you may be sad for a little bit, but then put a smile on your face and think about some of the funny things he may have said and done. Some of the things that may even have couraged your heart. Think about the love that he has poured into you. Legacy. Some people think legacy is when people leave money for you. That's not legacy. Some people think legacy is when someone leaves you a car or a house or, or some materialistic things or clothes or of that nature. That's not legacy. Legacy is when someone leaves a mark, a mark on your life. They've left something that encouraged you to look at life even differently. That's what legacy is. And in 55 years, something he may have said and done that have left a mark on your life in a positive way that you can say, I can hold on to this. And that with legacy, no one can take legacy from you. They can take your car. Go ahead, go out there and leave your car running. They, they, they can take your money, but no one can, can ever take the legacy, the love that was shared between you and your beloved. And you take that love, Susan. You take that love, Darlene. You take that love, Alpha Senior, and all the children and grandchildren. You take that love, and that love is marked on your life, marked in your heart, marked on your mind forever. And you hold on to that love that you've shared with him for eternity. Until one day when we cross over together, we'll see him again. So we won't say goodbye, but we'll see, we'll say, we'll see you, Alpha Junior, in the morning. Rest well, my brother. You did all you can do down here. Now let God do the rest. As the directors, funeral directors come, as our minister music plays, we're going to ask that uh, the, the pallbearers that are, have been chosen, that you meet us down in the, in the middle center lane aisle. Um, we have some flowers. We will ask if those would come to help with the flowers. And then we will re stand to recess out. We ask that you will go to your cars and get lined up as we line up together as we go to the cemetery.